Hey guys, I have here a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate 300 amp hour battery. Uh, one of my friends actually purchased this in spring of 2020 and they used it for a couple of months and it stopped working. And he dropped it off this morning to see if we can take a look at it, figure out what's wrong and get it working again. So on the front here we have the main positive and main negative terminal and there's a power button to turn it on and off. And you can see it's reading 7.44 volts currently. Uh, now he told me he tried to hook a charger up to this and it was not taking a charge even though he left it on for several hours. So I suspect uh, either one of the cells is bad or the BMS internally has shut it off for one reason or another. Uh, so here's the charger he was using with it. I think he said this actually came with the battery. It's 14.6 uh, volts, 20 amps. He said he paid 1200 bucks for this battery and I can link to where it was purchased from Amazon but some very cheap quality China components, I'll just say that much with it. So the first thing I want to do is make sure this power supply is actually working. So we've got negative, and we've got positive, and we're seeing 14.6 volts. So that is normal voltage. All right, so taking a look inside here, I've already looked through this a little bit with him, so I kind of have an idea. All right, so here we can see the main negative comes up of the battery pack and it's going in with this thick copper wire to this BMS board and then it's exiting the BMS and going over to the negative terminal. The positive lead comes up around the middle of the battery pack, same location as the negative, and it's going through this large aluminum bus bar over to the main positive terminal. That is an interesting way of doing it using an aluminum bar. It's not necessarily bad, I just would have expected. So if we take a closer look at this BMS, you can see that the quality of this is just terrible. I don't know how else to describe it. They've got all these MOSFETs lined up here. This is what turns the battery on and off, uh, depending on the conditions it senses, but they've tried to make it higher power than it actually is. So they put these large globs of solder and some of the pins are connected, some of them aren't. You know, it just really isn't attached very well and it's kind of messy craftsmanship. Somehow this BMS is supposed to be able to handle 300 amps. I don't see any way this is going to handle 300 amps continuous current. Uh, so my plan is actually to remove and replace this BMS. So these screws that are on here have this silicone stuff to keep them from backing out, but really they're not even tight. Like I hardly loosened that one and it broke free. And there's no washer, there's no lock nut, there's nothing on that. Alright, so on the positive terminal over here, there was also no washer, but they did have a serrated flange nut, which is good. So that'll serve the purpose of the washer and the lock nut on one end, but I really would have preferred to have seen a washer on the bolt end at least. Oh my, not only is there a mess of transistors on the top, there's a mess of transistors on the bottom. That is just terrible. Look how they actually tried to solder to the bolt heads. I don't even know how else to describe this. Alright, so with all that bracket and wiring out of the way, let's see what we're left here. We have 7.38 volts, so the voltage on the front display was correct. And I can see right off the bat, this cell here is quite a bit bulged, unfortunately. This one, the left side's not bad, it's perfectly flat, and that may not even be bulged too much. We'll have to see what happened here. So let's see if we can get some of these brackets out of here. Let's see if we can carefully slide it out here. Alright, there we go. All right, so let's take a look at what we got here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six small cells, and they're too wide, so there's 12 cells here. So we know that a 14 volt battery will have four lithium iron phosphate cells in series. So that tells us this is a 4S 3P battery pack. And what that means here on the top is you can see these three cells are wired in parallel, and then there is a series jumper to the next three cells, and then these three cells are wired in parallel. And they're actually laser welded on there. They're not like soldered or bolted or anything like that. So let's see what we got for voltage. All right, that battery pack is 0 0.2 volts. And we've got 2.50 volts, 2.28 volts, and 2.35 volts. So this first battery here is definitely the bad one. I don't know if maybe that BMS over discharged this and this bulging is caused by the over discharge. So here's just a closer look at the connections in between the cells. You can see the little holes in the center here are the pressure vents. So looking at the bad cells, I don't see any signs that any of them have leaked. 
all in all, the, the laser welding on these does look decent. It looks pretty good. So I don't know that there's any problems with the actual battery build itself. You can see the balance connections are on there well. They're glued down so they don't pull out. All right, so I have this DC power supply connected up to the low voltage uh, grouping of cells here. And this is a regulated voltage and a regulated current power supply. So what I want to do is just see if this battery will take a charge. You can tell it's swollen just a little bit. It's not what I would consider bad really. So yeah, I just want to see if it's going to take a charge here. So we'll turn up the voltage. All right, so we're putting an amp and a half in and you can see the voltage is slowly starting to rise. We're at 0.7 volts currently. Uh, we're just going to let this run for a little bit and I'm going to supervise it very closely to make sure this is not getting warm or bulging anything else or any other signs of failure is occurring. All right guys, so this pack that was at uh, 0.25 volts did wake up with the DC-DC power supply fairly well and I have my iCharger X6 connected currently with balance leads going to each battery. Uh, I'm charging this battery pack at 10 amps and here you can see the voltage of each cell. At this point it's about typical for what I would see at the bottom discharge of a battery pack like this. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is let this eye charger charge up maybe another hour or so and then I'll shut this off. I'll let the battery sit for an hour. I'll write down the voltage of each grouping of cells and then tomorrow morning I'll check and see if the voltage of any of these groups has changed uh, from the day before. So I think at that point <clears throat> that will give us a good idea of whether or not this battery pack is salvageable. Alright guys, so I shut this battery off last night after it charged for about an hour and a half. Then around 8 p.m. I took the voltage readings, 8 p.m. last night, and then 12.30 p.m. today, which was about 16 hours of difference, I took the voltage readings again. And then here you can see the difference between the first reading and the second reading. So we have a difference of 3 to 6 millivolts in the first grouping, and then the last grouping, which was the low discharge one, had a difference of 34 millivolts. I also noticed the cells on the back are a little bit bulged as well, so I guess it's not just that first grouping. They're just not as obvious. So if I hold this ruler up to it here, uh, you can see especially on the edges there where it's bulging out a little bit. More on the left side than the right side. So I guess what I really want to know and find out is whether or not this battery is going to be recoverable. I know with lithium iron phosphate, the two volt mark, you know, around two volts is typically the point where people say there is permanent damage to the cells if they're discharged below that. I've also seen plenty of people say that as long as the cell is not below two volts for an extended duration of time, there's typically no harm in trying to recover them. I do have a new 100 amp BMS that I ordered. It should be here in a few days, so maybe we'll give it a try and see what happens. The big question is going to be whether or not the cell grouping that was at zero volts is self-discharging because of internal shorts. Uh, in my comparison between the voltages today versus last night, I did see a 34 millivolt drop, which was quite a bit more than the other three groupings of cells. However, we can't really say with certainty that this grouping is now at the same state of charge as the other three because this needs to be charged up and then rebalanced to know that information for sure. I think the optimal solution would be to remove these three cells and replace them with something new. There are plenty of 100 amp hour cells in the market that would fit this same exact form factor. The issue being that uh, this aluminum is laser welded on here and you know you can't solder to aluminum. So there's not really any good ways to attach the new cells. So this grouping of three here that was at zero volts is attached with two pieces of, of this aluminum and it looks like there's a hole drilled in here such that this was intended to be the original terminal and then somebody had folded it over onto this new one and laser welded it. Uh, the connection on the other side is one long piece of aluminum. So I don't know if this had been replaced or repaired in the past and then resold as new or what the deal is here. Uh, so I guess I'm going to upload this video today and we'll call this part one of two because I'd really like to get your guys' feedback on how you think I should continue, if you think this is salvageable or if it just needs to be scrapped. I'm not as well versed in lithium iron phosphate as I am with uh, NMC or LCO, so, but if you found this interesting, please hit that like button. Please make sure to leave any questions, comments, or suggestions you have down below, and thank you for watching.